please face the clerk and raise your right hand. Mr. Sergeant, your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you. Have a seat, sir. <coughs> May I, Your Honor? You may. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. State your full name. My name is Daniel Michael Pratt, P-R-A-T-T. -T. And where do you work, sir? I work at the State Police Crime Laboratory in Lakeville. And how long have you worked there? I worked for the state police for approximately 32 years. How are you currently assigned? I'm the CSA in the South Region, the crime scene analyst. How long have you been a crime scene analyst? Mm, probably about 12 years. And just describe uh, what do you do as a crime scene analyst? As a crime scene analyst in the South, I, uh, I set up schedules for people who are on call. I respond to crime scenes where I I will go to crime scenes, I will, I, I will make observations, identify evidence, collect evidence, test evidence, preserve evidence, enter it into the laboratory management system, the LIM system. I'll write reports based on my findings. I also analyze evidence in the criminalistics laboratory, which it relates to shootings, beatings, stabbings, and other crimes. And I also testify in court. And how many people are assigned to your unit? I have a fluctuating unit where people are on call on a voluntary basis within the lab. Okay. So right now there's probably six people. In what areas do you cover as part of, um, you said you're working out of Lakeville? I do. I cover uh, Norfolk County, Plymouth County, Bristol County, and the Cape and Islands. And those individuals that work with you, they cover that same area? Yes, they do, on call. Now, um, just directing your attention back to June of 2013, more specifically, uh, June 19th, did you become involved in an uh, investigation of a homicide? Yes, I did. And at some point, did you receive a, a phone conversation, or did you have a phone conversation with somebody? Yes, I had discussions with uh, then Sergeant Bennett, now Lieutenant Bennett, from the crime, crime scene services section. And as a result of that, did you um, uh, do certain things in regards to the investigation of this matter? Yes, I was requested to process a vehicle the, uh, at Altima in our garage for the uh, presence of gunshot residues. And, and just describe this Altima. The Altima was a, uh, a newer vehicle. It, uh, it was in excellent condition with the exception of a, uh, the mirror on the driver's side door was broken. There was a, uh, there was a scuff mark on that window, the driver's window on the exterior, and there was some small dents on the trim around the window, just below the window. Now, where did you first see that, um, that Altima? The Altima was uh, brought to our garage in Lakeville. We have a garage where we process evidence. And on what date um, did you first see it? That was on the 19th. Now, when you say at your garage, is that in Lakeville? It is. The, we have a crime laboratory in Lakeville, and we have a garage that we process evidence in. Okay. And um, with regard to processing, uh, what types of things do you do in the course of your uh, duties? As far as the garage goes? Uh, no, as far as um, um, any testing or examination of an item such as a car. Well, it depends on the type of, of crime committed, what, what we're looking for. In the, in the event where someone was involved in a shooting, we may look for uh, gunshot residues in the vehicle. We may look for blood. We may take uh, samples of uh, hand or touch DNA from parts of the vehicle which may have DNA. Okay. Now on this particular occasion, um, when this vehicle, the Altima, was in your garage, did you conduct certain tests? Yes. And what, what types of tests did you undertake? On the 19th, I was requested to uh, take gunshot residue samples from the vehicle, and I did so. And with regard to gunshot um, uh, powder residue, um, just describe what is that? What type of test is that? It's a collection more so than a test. The, uh, the primer residues that I'm looking for in the event, in this type of a, uh, a collection, are. Uh, components of the discharge of a firearm, the primer residues, that would include some of the components being lead antimony and lead, and lead antimony and uh, lead stiffnate antimony and 
it escapes me for the moment. Okay. Barium. And had you, um, have you received training uh, in terms of uh, performing those tests? Yes, I have. How many times have you done those tests in the past? I've collected hundreds of samples. Okay. Now, on this date, did you conduct um, uh, what's known as a GSR test of any areas of the Altima? I did collections from four areas of the Altima. Okay, and those uh, collections, uh, just describe the areas that you collected them from. I collected a sample from the, the driver's area of the vehicle, which would include the interior door handle, the seat, the steering wheel, and the shift. And I also collected samples from the passenger side, front passenger side seat and door handle, as well as a sample from the rear driver's side seat and door handle and the, the rear passenger side seat and door handle. Okay. Ask you if you take a look at those. Do you recognize these photographs? Yes, I do. Do you recognize them today? This is a photographs of the, the Altima with the doors open. Photographs taken of the door open into the uh, driver's cockpit area, the front passenger area, the rear area from the driver's and passenger side, as well as a uh, photograph of the trunk area. And do you know where these photographs were taken? I do not know where they were taken. Your Honor, I'd offer this as the next uh, series of judgments. Maybe mark Photograph of the uh, the Altima front uh, driver's door open. And you indicated there's some damage to the vehicle that's shown in this photograph. Yes. And where is that? You can see the uh, the uh, the exterior mirror outside the door is uh, damaged. And this area over here. Yes. I now have a 212B on on the overhead. 
recognize the scene depicted here. That's a slightly different angle of the uh, interior driver's spot. Can you see portions of the passenger seat as well? Yes. Placing 212C, what is this depict? That's a photograph of the rear driver's side door open into the, you can see the, the back of the driver's seat as well as the, the bottom to the passenger, the, the rear <coughs> driver's side seat. Twelve D on the overhead. Recognize this. That's a photograph of the inside of the front passenger area. Twelve D. That's another picture of the. That's a door of the uh, front passenger door. Twelve F. Okay. That's a photograph of the uh, interior and <clears throat> interior door of the uh, rear passenger side. G. Yeah, that's a, that's another photograph of the uh, the rear seat area through the driver's side. Twelve H. And that's. The rear seat area from the passenger side. And 212I. That's a photograph of the interior of the trunk. So, what was the general condition of the interior compartment of the uh, Altima when you observed it on June 19, 2013? It was unremarkable, it was in good condition. Now, sir, you indicated um, the GSR, gunshot uh, powder residue collection, that you conducted uh, uh, a collection on certain areas of that vehicle. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And when you, when you undertook to collect those items, did you make a, um, a diagram of the areas that you had um, collected from? I did. I used a template diagram. I can approach your honor. Yeah. So I'm just going to show you this document. Do you recognize that? Yes. What do you recognize that to be? These are my notes of uh, using the template of the uh, areas where I collected the uh, GSR stubs. Okay. Is there a diagram that's depicted on that document? Yes. And does that show the locations of where of the actual um, areas that you collected them from? Yes. Your Honor, this is the next exhibit. Objection. Back to the next exhibit. <coughs> if I could publish this as well, Your Honor. Showing you this document, you recognize it? Yes, I do. And just describe um, what this depicts. The four areas of the vehicle are numbered one, two, three, and four. There are arrows pointed to the areas of collection in each numbered area. Like area one, there's a line going to the wheel, the gear shift, the handle on the door and areas of the seat where the collection stub was taken from. And the same applies for area two, which is the seat and the door handle. Okay, and so let's start with number one. Uh, that area of that compartment of the car is what? That's the, the uh, driver's area. Okay, and number two? That's the rear driver's side. Okay. And what about number three? That's the uh, front passenger side. And how about number four? That's the rear passenger side. Okay. 
in picking these compartments individually, so there's certain locations that he collected, um, or attempted to collect any gunshot um, powder residue. Yes. And just uh, describe the beginning of compartment one, both of those locations. The lo locations in, part, in uh, compartment one, uh, the wheel, the shift knob, the driver's door handle, and seat edges and bottom. And, uh, and that's indicative of the circles in this compartment area, sir? Yes. Okay, now we're going to number two. What areas did you um, uh, perform this collection kit on? The driver's, I mean, the, the uh, rear driver's side interior handle, seat edges, and seat bottom. Going to number three. That would also be the uh, interior handle on the front passenger side and seat bottom and edges. And lastly, number four. That's the rear passenger side, door handle, interior door handle, and seat bottom and edges. Now, after you do that collection kit, what do you, uh, well, first of all, just describe how are you, what is the kit composed of? What are the items you use to do that? When I talk about the kit and the collection device, the collection device, if you had a dime, something, a little piece of metal that's dime size, and you put a handle on it like a post, and you were able to hold the dime above you with a handle, and, there's a, the, and on the end of that handle, on the dime, is a sticky substance. It is just applied to the areas that I mentioned. Any potential gunshot residues would be collected on the sticky material. When I take one of these, these posts, I call them, out of the container, there's a cover on it. The cover's removed, exposing the sticky material. That post is then put into the contain original container and preserved. It's taped, shut, and initial and dated with evidence tape. That item is then, at some point, taken back to the lab, entered into our laboratory information management system, and is put into evidence and once it's put into evidence, it sits until another laboratory does the analysis on what may have been collected on that post. And was all of, the, all of these uh, collections um, performed on June 19th? Yes. Now, just with regard to um, these items that you've talked about, the uh, antimonium, barium, et cetera, how large or small are these uh, constituents of, of the primer residues? Well, the they're very small, the microscopic particles. The, uh, so at some point, the individual who analyzes those uses an electron microscope to identify the areas of interest and identify the particles, if they're available. And are there any things that would interfere with your ability to collect uh, these, um, these particles uh, when you do a collection kit? Well, there may be things that may cause the evidence not to be there. Describe what things might cause the evidence not to be there. If, for instance, the area that I'm examining or collecting from was cleaned, wiped, um, if someone, uh, if water damp, water gone, it, water could wash it off, the products could wash away easily. What about vacuuming? Vacuum, vacuuming would probably affect it as well. Okay, and, and movement? Movement by washing and wiping and whether it's sitting on something which transferring from one object to the next. Okay. And so after you do the collection, you'd, um, this isn't something that you can get an immediate result on. Is that true? No, we cannot. And do you actually do the testing to ultimately find out whether there was the presence of any gunshot uh, powder residue? I do not. Okay. Is that sent out um, to a different unit in the state police? It is. And what unit is that? That would go to the arson unit within the crime laboratory. And do you know an individual by the name of John Biello? Yes, I do. And what unit does he work in? He works in the arson section of the laboratory. And do you know um, whether he is, performs any such testing? Yes, he does. And do you know, um, do you understand that he's a witness in this case? I understand that. Okay. Now, on June 22nd, um, did you have um, uh, excuse me, one moment. June 20th, did you perform any additional uh, testing on the uh, Altima? I did. And what type of testing did you do, to, uh, do on that date? 
I had, uh, I was requested to screen the vehicle for uh, trace blood as well as collect other samples. And is that also um, in a part of uh, your duties as a, uh, uh, in the crime scene unit? It is. And just describe how do you go about collecting or strike that uh, testing for the presence of blood? We use a very sensitive uh, screening method. The test is called the orthotolidine screening method, the OT test. The test is a very sensitive test. I would take a piece of uh, clean filter paper, fold it, rub it against suspected areas, and transfer if blood is there onto the filter paper, and then test that filter paper with the chemicals, the orthotolidine chemicals. And how do you determine whether there's the presence of any blood or not? The, the test is a two-step process. Would add, I would add a drop of uh, orthotolidine to that paper, and then a short time later, add a drop of sodium perborate. If there's an immediate, an immediate color reaction, it's considered a positive screening test. And have you been trained in the use of that uh, testing? Yes. And have you performed that testing in the past? Many times. Now, did you perform uh, such testing on certain locations on the uh, Nissan Altima? I did. And as a result of uh, performing those tests, did you um, create a diagram of the areas that you tested? Yes, I used the template as well on that, on that testing and identify the areas of interest. Okay. And unlike the, uh, the gunshot uh, powder residue test, are you able to get a determination whether there's the presence or the absence of um, uh, blood? Yes. And does it test for uh, human blood? It will test for human blood for screening tests. It will also test for other blood substances. I might approach your honor. I'm just going to show you uh, two documents, ask you if you recognize those. I do. What do you recognize those to be? These are my notes taken of the, uh, using a diagram, noting areas of, that I had screened for blood on the diagram. Okay, and these two different documents, does one depict the uh, external portions of, of a vehicle and the other one the inside of a vehicle? They do. Okay. Your Honor, I'd offer this as the next exhibit. Okay. We move on to the next exhibit. That's a, uh, a diagram of the passenger side of the vehicle, and it notes that I screened the, the front passenger side and the rear passenger side handle for the presence of blood along the edges of the handle. And I also, sometime later, had taken a, uh, another swabbing from each handle. And did you conduct um, a test to find uh, whether there was the presence of any blood on those areas? I did, and the tests for both handles were negative. And is that noted in your diagram? Yes. Is that uh, OT? Yes. That's how I refer to orthotolidine, OT. And NEG? Negative. Going down to the uh, lower part of the diagram, what portion of the car does this show? That's the uh, driver's side of the vehicle. And did you conduct testing on the handles on the driver's side of the vehicle? I did. <coughs> Tell us um, uh, what specific areas did you test? 
I screened the exterior handles of the front and rear driver side edges for the presence of blood. When you say you tested for the edges, is there a reason you test uh, on the edges? Yes, I wouldn't want to disturb any potential fingerprints that might be on the inside of the handles. When this vehicle first came to the um, to your location, are there other units that ultimately processed the vehicle? Yes. And just in terms of the order, do you know where you were in that order in terms of uh, did you test first or sometime after somebody else? I tested first. And do you know of anyone else who conducted testing after you? I was working with uh, then Sergeant Bennett, now Lieutenant Bennett, on this date, and he was there while I was processing. And I didn't stay after I had collected samples, but I believe Lieutenant Bennett processed the vehicle for prints. Okay. And um, <clears throat> with regard to the outcome of your testing now of the two handles on the driver's side, what was that? The screening test for the blood was negative on both of those handles. I'm sorry, I'm putting what was marked 214B on the overhead. Just describe what this depicts. That depicts the interior portions of the vehicle. And does it show areas that you conducted similar testing, but on the interior? Yes. I'm just again focusing on the different compartments of uh, the vehicles. The driver's uh, compartment, did you test in that area? Yes, I tested the interior door pull and handle of the driver's area. Okay, and is that noted by these two locations? Yes. And did you do that similarly to the uh, rear driver's seat, front passenger, and the rear passenger seat? Yes. And what were the outcomes of that testing, sir? The test for uh, screening test for blood was negative on all of those areas. And sir, was there uh, additional testing that you conducted as a matter of uh, protocol of the trunk area? Yes. And was, uh, was that also similarly negative? Yes. Stained and unstained portions of the trunk carpet were negative. Now, sir, did you have a, um, a later occasion to be involved in the, um, or present during the execution of a search warrant on June 22nd of 2013? Yes. And where was that search warrant being executed? Ronald. Okay. And did you meet other, um, either personnel from your unit at that location? I did. I, I worked with uh, fellow chemist uh, Jessica Robidoux, as well as a number of other state police personnel who were at the house. Okay. And during the course of, um, of that uh, execution search warrant, uh, did you examine a towel? I didn't examine any towels. We looked at towels at the house and compared them to another towel. And when you say compared them to a towel, prior to going to that uh, location, had you already examined a different towel? I had made, made observations of the characteristics of a towel in the laboratory, and it, we're comparing those characteristics to other towels in the house. And did you understand when you were examining at the um, at the laboratory that that towel had come from a, uh, a scene where a, a body had been recovered in North Attleboro? Yes. And so when you made observations of a towel at the uh, at this home. Were you able to determine whether it was similar or dissimilar to the one that you had examined at the laboratory? It was dissimilar. And as a result of that, was that collected or not collected? I didn't collect it. Okay. <coughs> if I could have a moment, Your Honor. So I have, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, you told us that you took a uh, whole lot of uh, stubs for 
gunshot residue inside the Nissan Altima on June 19, 2013, right? I took four. You took a total of four stubs? Yes. So the diagram where you were talking about the areas that you stubbed, you stubbed more than one spot in that in each of those areas, right? That's correct. Okay. You stubbed the whole driver's side area with one stub, then you stubbed, is that right? Well, as I, I had mentioned, I stubbed in the driver's seat area, the, the wheel, the gear shift, the seat bottom and seams, and the door handle. Okay. And all of that, you included all of that on one sticky stub, right? That's correct. Okay. And then you, you essentially did the same thing in each of the other three seat areas of the interior of the car? I did. Okay. And you're not an expert in gunshot residue, are you, sir? No. Okay. Now, you told us that you also did some uh, testing, you said, for the presence of blood? Yes. Okay. And you described it as uh, orthodolidine testing, also known as OT testing? Right. The orthodolidine test or OT testing. Yes. It's the same thing, right? Yes. OT is just an abbreviation? Correct. For that long mm -hmm. word? All right. And you, to you describe it as a very sensitive test. Was that what you told us on direct examination, sir? It is very sensitive. Okay. Well, it's not a test for blood specifically, is it, sir? It's a screening test for blood. Well, a lot of other things beside blood will uh, come up positive on that particular screening test. Isn't that true, sir? It, relatively speaking, other things do come up positive. For example, uh, will animal poop come, out, come up positive? It depends if there's blood in it. Well, how about if there's no blood in it? Fecal matter could contain blood cells, so the heme might be from that causing the reaction. What about saliva? It depends if where you get the saliva from, there could be blood within the saliva as What well. about tomato juice? That has been known as one of the things that cause it. So it's not a test specific for blood. Is that fair to say, sir? No, I didn't say that it was. I said it was a screening test for blood. Okay. And other things as well. Is that fair? Well, we're not looking for other things. If we see there are red stains that look like blood, we screen it for blood. If it comes up positive, we collect it. But it doesn't just come up positive for blood. It comes up positive for other things as well. Is that true, sir? Well, based on knowledge and experience, I probably wouldn't uh, screen tomato juice or sir, other can items. Sir, you answer my question, which was whether or not that test will register a positive reading for substances other than blood? Yes or no? It does. Thank you. Now, is it fair to say you are uh, either the senior or one of the senior people in your unit, sir? Just so happens I am, yes. Okay. You've been there for over 30 years? That's correct. Okay. And uh, am I correct that uh, there was a problem with a uh, test result that you came up with in early 2012, sir? Oh, really? I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, let me ask it again. Was there a problem, sir, with the result of a test that you performed in your laboratory in early 2012? Not that I'm aware of. Well, party.
show you a document. Oh, okay. Just, just to focus your attention sure, on what I'm asking you about. Okay. okay. Part of your job, sir, do you take proficiency tests from time to time? That's correct. And uh, did you uh, fail a proficiency test that you were given uh, with respect to the discipline of basic hair screening uh, in early 2012? There was a, uh, a Can you answer my question, sir, without giving a speech? Yes. Please. Did you fail that test? It was inconsistent. Okay. And as a result of that, sir, uh, am I correct that you were uh, taken off of uh, forensic casework in the laboratory for a period of time? Uh, no, I, when I was at that time, it was a hair with a root, questioning whether there was tissue on the root. I was taken off of cases where there was hairs with tissue on roots. That was it. And you were reinstated the following year, sir, on, your, on, on such casework? I was reinstated a short time later. Well, tell us the best. Do you recall when you were taken off casework and when you were put back on casework, sir? No, I know it wasn't very long. I know I was given a, another test to uh, prove my competency in it. And it was, I would say, a couple of months at most. And that's in just that discipline, of all the disciplines we do. So let me show you that document again. Is that the form that you were provided that uh, informed you of the uh, incons inconsistent result on your proficiency test, sir? Right. It's re remediated. And so I didn't ask you when it was remediated. Okay. Yet. I, asked I you think this is a form, yes. Okay. And is that a copy of the form that you received? It probably is. I don't re remember that, though. And. Is that a form which is uh, maintained by the Massachusetts State Police Forensic Services Group uh, in the regular course of its business? Yes. I would offer this as the next exhibit, Your Honor. Check your Honor. I see that, yes. Who is Michelle Levasseur? She is one of the supervisors in the crime lab. Okay. And what is the date uh, that uh, is on this form for when Michelle Levasseur graded your proficiency test, sir? That says 125-12. January 25th, 2012? Yes. At some point, sir, were you informed by uh, Michelle Levasseur that you had uh, now uh, successfully completed your uh, trace competency test and that you were therefore authorized to resume casework? That's true. Do you recall uh, when that was, sir? I don't. So your document, sir? Does that refresh your recollection that you were informed? Uh, well, uh, does that refresh your recollection as to the date that you were informed by Michelle Levasseur that you could uh, resume casework, sir? Well, can you answer my question? Does that refresh your recollection? Yes. And what was the date that you were informed by Michelle Levasseur that you could resume casework, sir? That says March 5th, 13. 2013. That's what it says. 13 and a half months later, right? I'm not sure the dates on that, how it worked out, but that's what that says. I have no further questions. Thank you.
Sir, that um, there are proficiency tests that are um, given to um, people, people like yourself and in your unit. Is that right? That's right. Is that true all across the state police crime lab? Yes. And that's to ensure um, certain disciplines that people are current. Is that true? Yes. And this, the what's now marked 215, that was shown by Mr. Sultan, that pertained to what discipline? I believe it was hairs. Okay, well, let um, me just show this to you. Five, just right up here, sir. Is that basic, basic hair screening? screening? With regard to basic hair screening, did you do any screening of any hair in this case? I did not. Okay. So, with regard to your proficiency back in June or 2013 and anything that you had to do in this case regarding uh, examinations, testing, were you proficient in those disciplines? Yes. That's all I have. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you, sir. Our next witness would be uh, Sergeant Jack Moran, please. Face the clerk and raise your right hand. Do some surrender your testimony to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I, hope you I do. Have a seat, sir. <coughs> may I, Your Honor? You may. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Would you state your full name? John Moran. How do you spell your last name? M O R A N. Uh, where do you work? Uh, Massachusetts State Police. How long have you worked for the State Police? Uh, 22 years in June. And I'd like to uh, direct your attention back to um, June of 2013, where you were working uh, in the detective unit for the state police. I was. And were you assigned to investigate um, uh, homicides? That's correct. And um, at that time, were you working out of uh, Bristol uh, District Attorney's Office? That's correct. And on the date of January, uh, strike that, June 17, 2013, did you receive a phone call? Yes. As a result of that uh, call, did you go somewhere? Yes. Where did you go? Uh, North Attleboro. And when you went to North Attleboro, do you recall the location that you went to? Uh, yes, I got up 95, uh, I think it was exit 5, and went down to, uh, I think it was John Deach Boulevard. Okay. And just uh, describe that area. Uh, it's right off the highway. When you go down John Deach, there are um, uh, buildings or businesses along John Deach. And as John Deach turns off to the right, um, you can go straight into uh, a pit area. Okay. And approximately what time did you arrive at that area? Uh, approximately 7.15 p.m. thereabouts. And when you arrived there, what was the weather doing? Uh, it was raining. And do you know how long it continued to rain? Uh, uh, maybe 45, 50 minutes. Okay. When you arrived and you said it was raining, um, did you go anywhere near, uh, uh, well, let me just ask you this. Did you see certain items that were already covered up? Yes. Okay. And. As a result of that, did you go somewhere? I did. Where did you go? Um, when you enter that area, um, there was a tent set up over here with something covered, and I went off to the left, and there was a tent area uh, where I recognized other law enforcement okay. and personnel. <laughs> with regard to the, the areas that were covered up, um, did you ever go near those areas before they were covered up? No. And later on, a, a, you were involved for some period of time in the investigation, is that true? That's correct. And were, the, were you then later um, assigned to other, uh, other cases? Uh, yes, later on, uh, uh, right around July 16th, there was uh, another case I had to be a supervisor on. 
Okay, and how many supervisors were, were, uh, are, are in the detective unit, sergeants? Excuse me? H how many sergeants uh, were there in the detective unit? Including myself, three. And so later on, when there were additional cases, um, were, were you and, and some of the other um, individuals then directed to work on those other cases? Uh, as, a, as a supervisor, as a sergeant, um, I was the one that worked on uh, four other cases that started in July, right around July 16th. There were four incidents. Okay. So just uh, directing, uh, you were involved in this investigation for some, um, a few months after June. Is that true? I was involved in the investigation until about July 16th when we had the other case. And then I was still, after that, I was still available to assist. Okay. And Less of a role. Okay, and over the next uh, several months, were there additional cases that you became involved in, not this current case? Uh, yes, there were two in uh, July. There was one in uh, October, and there was uh, one in November. Okay, so with regard to this case, when you had responded to the scene, you indicated um, the position you took. Did you ever provide, uh, or did anyone ever take photographs of your footwear? I don't recall that. Okay, and did you ever have an occasion to be in any areas uh, near the body uh, prior to the, the item, uh, these areas being covered? No. Okay. Now, at, how long would you say you were at the scene? Uh, maybe if I got there at 7.15, maybe till 8.30, 8.40. And during the time that you were there, at some point, were you present during the inventory of the body? Yes. And just describe um, what items you saw taken from the body. Uh, a wallet uh, uh, from which we obtained his ID and uh, a set of keys. And at some point, uh, did you inspect <coughs> a certain information on the keys? Yes. And later, um, before leaving that scene, did you do anything uh, with, the key, with the keys with that information? Yes. Uh, uh, on the keychain, it identified uh, the make, model, and uh, I, I think the model and the plate of the vehicle. So I went, there was a business, as you came into that uh, pit area, there was a business there and I, I, I took the keys and went up to that business and there was an alarm on the keys and I was hitting the alarm um, hoping that a light would come on and we could, the, we could find the vehicle. Okay, did you have any luck finding the vehicle in those areas? No. Now after doing that, at some point, uh, did you go somewhere from there? Yes, after that, I, I, I drove around uh, to the different businesses uh, in the area, uh, not with the keys, but um, uh, looking for uh, the vehicle. It was an SUV, and I think it had Rhode Island plates. Um, so I searched uh, all the businesses in the area and was unable to find it. Okay. And after uh, being unable to find that vehicle, did you go somewhere? Yes. Where'd you go? The North Attleboro Police Department. And when you went there, um, did you meet with any other um, fellow officers? Yes, most of us were down there. Okay. And uh, approximately how long were you at that uh, North Attleboro Police Station that night? Until uh, the next day, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And during uh, some time after going back there, at approximately 11 to 11.15, did you see uh, somebody come into the uh, station? I did. And who is that? Uh, Aaron Hernandez. And Aaron Hernandez, you see him in the courtroom today? I do. Can you point him out and describe what he's wearing? Uh, sitting there, looks like a blue uh, suit, maybe a purple tie and white shirt. Your Honor, if the record can reflect the witness identifying the defendant. Me. Thank you. And uh, just w when you saw him at the station, did you see uh, where he went? Yes, he went into a room in the, off of the detective uh, area. Okay. And when he went into that room, uh, did, you see, uh, did you see what he was doing? Uh, yes, he lay down on the floor and okay. he uh, uh, plugged in his uh, uh, cell phone and I think he might have texted. Uh, okay, did you know um, w when he had gone in the room um, w what the purpose was that he was in that room? He was waiting for somebody. Okay, and when you say um, he was waiting there, how long did he wait? Maybe 45, 50 minutes. And during that time, uh, what, what did you see him doing? Uh, he was lying on the floor. Um, put his uh, uh, cell phone and charger into the uh, outlet. Okay. How were you able to see that? Uh, he was on video, so there was a big TV, and I could see into the room where he was at. Okay, and when you say video, do you know whether anything was being recorded? There was no recording, no recording, audio or video. Okay, so, so were you in a different room? I was. 
And were you uh, looking at a uh, uh, some type of um, screen? Yes, a big screen. And did that show, um, were there cameras throughout the um, North Attleboro Police Station? Are you aware of any surveillance cameras in the building? Or yes, there were some down in the um, uh, the dispatch area, and I think, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, the, 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 the camera I was looking at, or the, the view, it took up the whole screen. So I don't know if that system had the capability to, to look at other things. Okay. And so during that time, uh, other than being able to see him through this camera, um, or, well, why you were able to see him through this camera, how long um, after he went into the room did he, as you've described, lie down on the floor? Uh, almost right away. And when he uh, was laying down on the floor, was he doing anything with his phone? Uh, yes, he put the phone, in the, uh, like I said, put the phone in the charger, and he was uh, with the phone. He, uh, pro I'm not sure if he was texting, but it looks like he could have been texting. Okay. And at some time while he was doing this, um, did anything change with regard to the lighting in the room? Uh, yes, when he was in the room, I think someone had walked by uh, outside the room and he said, uh, shut the light off. Uh, so, we, so he hit the lights. Okay. And when you say he hit the lights, who was that? I, I'm not sure who it was. I think it was just a, another police officer that was in the area. Okay. And after the lights went off, were you still able, from where you were, able to see into that room? Yes. Okay. And what could you see? I still saw him lying down on the floor with the phone. And how were you able to see that? On the video, the, uh, the, the room was dim, it wasn't completely dark, the door was open and there was uh, light in the different room, so you could actually, you could still see everything. Okay. Now while you were at the station, did you have a conversation with um, a trooper Dan Giosi and a trooper Michael Bates? Uh, yes. And do you know, um, having been at the scene, do you know whether they, w they had a certain item that they were working on? Yes. And what item was that? Uh, uh, a cell phone that was found on the uh, the body of Bolton Lloyd. Okay. And at some point after some period of time that they had been working on that phone, did you have a conversation about certain information, just yes or no? Yes. And as a result of that, were you given uh, a, a number? Yes. And did you do something with that number? I did. What did you do? I called it. Okay. And just where were you when you called it? I was still in the, uh, uh, the room viewing uh, the video of uh, uh, Aaron Hernandez in, in uh, an adjacent room. Okay, were the lights on or off at that time? Uh, in the room that uh, uh, Hernandez... Yes, when you called uh, the number. The lights in that room were off, the door was opened, uh, and there was lights further down the corridor. Okay, so could you still see inside? Yes, but... And, uh, yes. I'm sorry, and what was the defendant doing at that time? He was laying down on the floor. And so when you called the number, just tell us what happened when you, when you dialed. Uh, well, first of all, what number did you dial? Um, two, area code 203-606-8969. Uh, okay. And when you dialed that number, did you see anything happen? Yes. What did you see happen? Uh, the phone that uh, Mr. Hannes had in his hand um, illuminated, lit up. Okay. And when it illuminated, uh, did you, did you hear anything after that? Yes, I was on the phone. I was watching and listening. The phone rang, and, and he picked up the phone. Okay. And when he picked up the or phone? Or answered the phone. When he answered the phone, uh, could you see him answer the phone? I, I could, yes. And when he answered the phone, uh, did you hear him say anything? Yes. What did he say? He said hello. Okay. When he said hello, what did you do? I hung up. Okay. Now. Did you, uh, since that time, have you had an occasion to review uh, phone records of uh, the defendant, Aaron Hernandez? Yes. Were you able to recognize your phone number? Uh, yes. And at what time did you make that phone call onto his phone? Okay. Uh, it was at 11.15, 11.16 p.m. on um, the 17th of June, 2013. Okay. Now, how long after... Um, that phone call, did uh, the defendant remain in the room with the lights out? Uh, maybe another half hour, 40 minutes. And what happened after that? Uh, he left the room and went downstairs. And when he left the room, uh, did anyone try and uh, impede him or interfere with him leaving the room? No. And when, you, when he went downstairs, uh, did you see him again inside the building? I did not. Did you see him again that evening? On camera. Okay, and how was it you were able to see him on camera? Uh, after he left, I went downstairs in the dispatch area. Um, uh, they have uh, surveillance equipment, and I observed him on the surveillance equipment in a car uh, out in the parking lot. 
Okay. And at some point, uh, do you know how long he was out in a car in the parking lot? Not much, yeah. Okay. After that, did you ever see him back in the station? I did not. Okay. When is the, um, you said you were there to four or five in the morning. What date would that have been? Uh, that would have been uh, the 18th of June. Okay. 18th and on the, of June, 2013. And on the 18th of the June, uh, when you said you were there at four or five, at some point, um, um, did you leave the station? Yes. And uh, did you um, did you later return back to the station? I did. And at what time did you return back? I'm not sure. I think it was about noon time. Okay. And when you returned back, were you working uh, still on this investigation? Yes. Were you working with any other officers? Yes. Who else was involved just in terms of departments at that time? Departments was North Attleboro and the state police that, uh, that were attached to the Bristol County DA's okay. office. And at some point in the course of that afternoon, was there any work being done on a search warrant? There was. And as a result of doing work on a search warrant, was a search warrant later applied for that evening? Yes. And what happened when uh, uh, the search warrant was applied for? Uh, we went down to the location. Okay. And when you say we, who went to the location? Um, Just in terms of, again, departments. What well, departments? Uh, the state police detective unit and also uh, members of the North Attleboro Police. Okay. And approximately what time, <coughs> excuse me, did you go uh, to? I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe 7.30 p.m. Okay. Sometime and, in the evening. And when you went there, um, at some point, did you uh, go into the home? I did. And whose home was that? Uh, Aaron Hernandez. Did you see him there at that time? I did. Was anybody else in the home when you had entered? Uh, I think his fiance was and his child. Okay. And were there certain items that were being searched for? There were. And what items were searched for on that date? Uh, his cell phone and also uh, surveillance equipment. Okay. And was uh, self, um, uh, surveillance equipment recovered? Yes. And what about the cell phone? We didn't recover it at the home. No. Okay. Now, later on, was there a second search warrant that you were present for? Yes. And when was that? I, I believe it was June 22nd, 2013. And where was that executed? Uh, at his residence. Okay. And on that date, um, was he present? Yes. And just uh, describe the items that you were searching for on the 22nd. The 22nd, uh, clothing, uh, footwear, um, firearms, ammunition, um, I, I, I forget what else. Okay. Uh, sir, is it fair to say there were no uh, firearms recovered? That's correct. And with regard to ammunition, uh, was there a box of ammunition, 22 caliber ammunition that was recovered? Yes, there, there was. And do you re recall where that was recovered? That was in the basement, I think, in the storage area. Okay. And with regard to clothing, you were aware of certain items of clothing that were taken f uh, from the home? Yes. And what items, if you recall? Um, there was a white uh, sweatshirt with a hood. Uh, there was a couple of pair of um, uh, jeans and uh, a couple of pair of sneakers. Okay. And with regard to, at some point, did you have an occasion to go to the garage area? Yes. Uh, now, back on, was that on both um, uh, the, the date of the 18th uh, and the 22nd? On both of those dates, yes. Okay. And on the 18th, did you observe any vehicles in the garage area of the home of uh, the defendant? Uh, yes. Okay. And, and what, um, how many vehicles? Two. And what kind of vehicles? Uh, one was a big SUV, white. Uh, I think it was an Audi. Uh, and the second one was an old um, uh, Toyota Camry. Okay. Approach on. So I'm just going to show you these three photos and ask if you would uh, take a look at them. Yeah, that's the white SUV. It will look like we're in the garage. That's the white SUV, and that's the Camry. That's a picture of the Camry. I remember it had Florida plates. Again, the Camry. Okay. And is this how they appeared on June, uh, during the, um, the time that you were there on June 18th of 2013? I can take a look. Sure. I believe that's the 18th. Okay. No objection, Your Honor. Back to the next exhibit. Thank you. Thank you. 
Two sixteen eight fifty. If I might publish this one. So I'm placing um, two sixteen A on the screen. Can you see that right? Yes. And just to uh, describe um, what's depicted in this photograph. What's what? Uh, what is depicted in this photograph? Uh, two vehicles uh, in the garage. Uh, I think the first one is the white. Uh, uh, SUV, I think it was an Audi, and the the, 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 the far one is the uh, Toyota Camry. The far away. And they're showing you now 216C. Let's take that. Uh, I'm sorry, 216B. You recognize that? Yeah, that's just from a different angle, I believe. That's the Camry, that's the uh, the Audi. Does that show that plate you described? The Florida here? plate, yeah. And the Florida plate is on the Camry. Lastly, uh, 216C. That's another picture of the Toyota Camry with the uh, Florida plate in the garage. If I could have a moment, Your Honor. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Um, on June 20th, were you present uh, when some items were recovered at a dumpster at the Enterprise Rental Car uh, location in North Attleboro? Yes, sir. Can you tell us um, who was there? Um, for the state police, uh, it was um, Sergeant Paul Baker, uh, Lieutenant Michael King, um, myself. Uh, for North Attleboro, uh, I think it was Detective uh, Mike Elliott. Uh, I believe the chief was there. I think the I think the uh, captain was there. Um, so that would be Chief Riley. Chief Riley, and I think uh, Captain uh, Dorenzo. I'm not, I I think he was there. Captain Dorenzo. I think so. Anyone else? Uh, Besides police officers. Yeah. Um, they could have been. I, I just don't recall. Okay. And um, were you there? Uh, when uh, Sergeant Baker went into the dumpster? I was. And how did he do that? He just jumped in. Uh, did he have to climb over or he just uh, kind of... I'm not sure. I, th I think he just hurtled in. Leaped in. And uh, how long was he in the dumpster? I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe a half hour. Okay. And uh, who made the decision for uh, the dumpster to uh, be searched before crime scene services arrive? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. When we went down there, it was understood that we were going to retrieve evidence out of a dumpster. So I'm not that sure. That was the plan that the six of you had? Well, it was understood. I don't think we, we I, I think when I drove down there, uh, I knew we were going into a dumpster to, in search for evidence. And uh, did you go down there by yourself in your own? I, I believe so, yeah. Vehicle? Yes, I believe so. And um, uh, so on the state police side, who was in charge of that group of you? Um, well, Lieutenant Michael King is my immediate supervisor, but also um, uh, Mr. McCauley and Mr. Bomberg were also there. Mr. McCauley and Mr. Bomberg were at the uh, dumpster at Ye the Enterprise? Yes. Okay. And, uh, and also the, the, well, the chief was there as well. And then the chief was there on the North Attleboro Police Department side. Yes. And was there a discussion among the, so I guess that's eight of you now, three North Attleboro, three state police, and uh, two people from the district attorney's office? Yes, and there could have been more. I, I know a, a, a trooper showed up in crime scene. I'm not sure when he showed up. How much after you got there did the crime scene services uh, trooper show up? I'm not, sure, I'm not sure. Maybe a half hour. That's a guess. I'm not really sure. Okay. And um, so was Sergeant Baker already in the dumpster by the time the crime scene services person showed up? I believe so. And uh, before Sergeant Baker jumped into the dumpster, uh, was there a discussion at the scene about whether someone should wait for crime scene services to arrive? I don't believe so. And was there a discussion about um, who would go in? 
Um, no. How did that come about that Sergeant Baker jumped into the dumpster? Uh, Sergeant Baker, uh, I think he was wearing uh, blue jeans and a uh, work boots, and he had the gloves on, and he was pretty agile, so it was pretty easy for him to get in. Okay. Um, and uh, what was done with the items uh, that uh, um, Sergeant Baker removed from the dumpster? Uh, they were photographed, uh, bagged, and secured as evidence. Well, that was after crime scene services arrived? Um, I don't know if they were photographed before crime scene got there or not. Who was taking the photographs? I'm not sure. Okay. And um, do you recall that uh, Sergeant Baker would pass uh, <coughs> items out and that they would be sent to the... Uh, put in the back of his pickup truck? Items? Garbage. Yes. Stuff out of the dumpster. Yes. That's what happened, right? That Sergeant Baker emptied the dumpster into the back of the contents of the dumpster into the back of the pickup truck? Uh, no. We only, we, we only, uh, it was only emptied until we actually found the evidence. Once we found the evidence, we didn't empty the rest of the garbage. All right. How much garbage was emptied before uh, he found the stuff you were looking for? I'm not sure. I think, uh, I think, I, I think we knew that uh, the evidence was thrown into the dumpster loosely. Um, so my recollection is that when we were, uh, before we were looking for the evidence, we'd take out the bigger bags, remove them from the dumpster, um, and search for loose items as opposed to ripping open a bag and going through it. So uh, to answer your question, we took out some uh, trash out of the dumpster. Um, I, I, I wouldn't know how to measure it. Okay. Could you just describe it for us? Uh, a couple of bags. It was it was trash. I'm not. The, so the, it might be uh, water bottles or stuff that might have been in a rental car when it was returned. That kind of stuff. I'm not sure if there was water bottles. I know we were looking for a uh, vitamin bottle. I, I know you you were looking for a vitamin bottle and a child's drawing and a shell casing. That's correct. And some blue bubble gum. Yes. Okay. And uh, do you remember when that was brought out? Uh, when those items were brought out by uh, Sergeant Baker? Uh, I, I know I was there, but I'm not, uh, I, I was there, I, I, don't, I don't remember him. Well, actually, I think he lifted it out like this. I, I think the, the gum and the bullet, I think, were wrapped up in the, uh, the picture. In the child's drawing? Yes, and the vitamin water was... Uh, that was separate? A little bit, yeah. All right. It appeared to be. And, and so, would you say that the drawing was kind of crumpled around the uh, casing and the uh, bubble gum? Yes. And was the uh, um, uh, bubble gum attached to the casing when you saw it? I'm not sure. It could have been next to it. It could have been attached to it. I don't know. Do you remember seeing it? No. What was your job there? to assist in any way I could. And did you assist in any way you could? Yes. What'd you do? When he was in the dumpster, I was actually outside the dumpster peering in, uh, trying to search if I could visually identify any of the evidence we were looking for. Did you, were you able to identify anything? I think I was the one that found, uh, or identified the, um, the vitamin bottle. Okay. Um, and uh, were you there, uh, how long were you there that evening? At the rental car? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. After we found the evidence, um, um, I left. So maybe eight eight o'clock. Okay. And uh, I think you said that the uh, evidence was photographed. I, I know. I, I believe crime scene photographed when they got there. I thought that maybe um, one of the detectives photographed it as soon as it came out of the uh, rubbish. And. Um, uh, so you saw crime scene taking pictures of the items that had been gathered? I don't remember that. I know crime scene came down. Um, I just don't recall if they were taking the pictures, uh, when they took the pictures, if they took pictures. But you were there when they arrived? Yes, I was there, and I know that uh, one of the people from crime scene eventually was there. I'm not sure exactly what time he arrived there. All right. But I was there when he got there, I believe. And, and uh, did you see the... 
paper uncrumpled so that you could look at the uh, blue bubble gum and the uh, shell casing? I, I don't recall. And do you remember uh, that the bubble gum was detached from the shell casing at some point? I don't remember that. Okay. And do you remember those items being bagged uh, at some point before you left the scene? I didn't visually see them bagged. I know they were bagged, though. Uh, do you know that they were bagged just because that's the standard procedure or because you saw it? I, I, don't, I didn't see him put them in the bag. I knew it was going to be bagged. I knew they bagged them. So you're just uh, assuming that they bagged them because that's what normally happens. I think I anticipate them uh, being bagged. And after the fact, I, was told, I believe I was told that they were bagged. All right. Now, um, did Mr. McCauley or Mr. Bomberg uh, make the decision about how to proceed? In terms of what? In terms of going into the dumpster before the arrival of crime scene services? Um, no. Did they take part in that discussion? I, I really don't think there was a discussion. I, I, when we, as I said, when we had headed down there, we knew that we were going to go in the dumpster to retrieve evidence. Had so you I, I, had a discussion before going down there about what was going to occur? No. Um, where did you come from when you went down there? I'm not sure. Had you been at the North Attleboro Police Station? I'm not sure. I could have been. Okay. Were you with the other investigators uh, when you went down there? I arrived alone. I'm not sure who I was with prior to, to, to that. All right. But you had an understanding from some conversation that the group of you were going to go in and take the uh, evidence out of the dumpster without regard to when crime scene services was arriving. I don't think it was an issue. We were going to go in the dumpster and retrieve the evidence. And crime scene services would come along whenever? Whenever they get down there, hopefully, you know, the sooner the better. All right. Thank you. No questions, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Thank you. McDonough, please, Your Honor. Raise your right hand. Have a seat, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Could you please state your full name and spell your last name for the jurors? Brian McDonough, M C D O N O U G H. And how old are you, sir? Forty years old. And uh, what town do you live in? Eastern Massachusetts. <clears throat> and do you work? I do. And uh, what type of uh, work do you do, please? I own a strength conditioning and personal training business. And can you describe to the jury, please, what a strength and conditioning um, and personal training business is? Um, we basically work with uh, professional collegiate high school athletes and uh, personal training clients as well. <clears throat> and um, so those are two sort of separate uh, aspects of your business? Yes. And as it regards the strength and conditioning, can you describe uh, somewhat uh, um, with more detail, what types of things that you do? Basically, athletes are looking to improve their performance, get faster, get stronger, more explosive, more agile. We'll uh, hire, you know, my staff, my business, utilize our services. And uh, how long have you been in that line of work? Uh, about 18 years. And uh, prior to that, could you just tell the jurors a little bit about, uh, uh, did you attend college? Yes, I went in to the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. Um, came out of UMass and was teaching health and gym in the Boston Public School System at the Grover Cleveland Middle School. Um, you know, after having some, some success after school and uh, on the weekends in the summer, you know, training athletes, I decided to start that business full time. And when was that, please? That was roughly 2005, 2006. Mm -hmm. And uh, since that time, um, have you been doing that uh, full time, as you described? Yes, I have. And where is your business located? Foxborough, Massachusetts. Thank you. 
Can you just describe the facility that you have there in Foxborough? Uh, well, we have um, three Olympic-sized rinks, and uh, my training facility is on the second floor. We've got about 3,500 square feet, you know, 40 yards of turf, and you know, uh, a lot of different equipment. <clears throat> And um, is that the location where you uh, uh, do strength and conditioning uh, with, among other things, professional athletes? Correct. And prior to June of 2013, did you know Aaron Hernandez? Say it again, I'm sorry. Before June of 2013, did you know Aaron Hernandez? Uh, um, yes. And uh, could you just tell us sort of how familiar you, you were with Mr. Hernandez, how you knew him? Um, just through some of uh, his teammates and myself working in and around uh, the New England Patriots facility at Gillette Stadium. And so uh, had you met him on uh, other occasions? Uh, just at the at the stadium. And um, about how many times before June of 2013 approximately? Three, maybe four, just in passing. Mm -hmm. And do you see Aaron Hernandez in the courtroom today? I do. And could you point him out, please, and identify him? Right over there. Your Honor, the, if the uh, record could reflect the witnesses identified the defendant. Now, in June of uh, 2013, uh, were you contacted by somebody in regards to Eric Hernandez? Yes, I was. And uh, it, as a result of that contact, did you anticipate receiving contact directly from Mr. Hernandez? Yes, I did. And uh, in fact, did you receive that contact, Mr. Hernandez? I did. And could you tell us when that was, please? That was on Sunday of June the 16th. I received a voicemail from Aaron, you know, stating that we were going to be working together and. Um, that was on June the 16th. And at that time, did you already have Aaron Hernandez's phone number uh, available to you? Yes. And uh, when you were contacted by Mr. Hernandez, was that to your cellular telephone? Yes. And could you tell us what your cellular telephone number is, please? 774-444-3049. Uh, and uh, when, your, uh, when you were contacted by Mr. Hernandez, um, did your cell phone tell you who was calling? It did not. And uh, did it give you a number? Yes. And could you tell us the number that you received uh, when Mr. Hernandez contacted you? That was 203-606-8969. Uh, and did you pick up the telephone or did, uh, was it a telephone call? Yes. And did you answer it or did it go to your voicemail? It went to my voicemail. And did, did you retrieve your voicemail? Yes. And did you recognize the voice of the person that was calling you? Yes, I did. And whose voice did you recognize that as? It was Aaron's. And uh, did the person who was calling you identify themselves? Yes. And who, as to whom did they identify themselves? Aaron Hernandez. And could you tell us, please, uh, the substance of the voicemail that Mr. Hernandez left you on June 16th of 2013? Basically that we were going to be, you know, working together and uh, wanted to set up a schedule to get moving. And, uh, did you know particularly what kind of work that you were going to do, be doing with Mr. Hernandez? Yes. Could you tell the jurors, please, what type of work that was? Well, we were somewhat close to, to you know, to training camp, so uh, basically just getting him in shape, conditioning, working on his speed, and just getting his body back up to where it needed to be uh, prior to the start of training camp. Now, after you received that uh, voicemail from Mr. Hernandez, did you do something? Yes. And could you tell the jurors, please, what you did? Uh, I shot him a text message. Um, basically stating, you know, what do you say we get working tomorrow? Some of that effect, uh, get down to business. And did you text to uh, that telephone number that you've just described for us? Yes, I did. And 203 um, 606 Correct. correct? If I could, Your Honor, I'm going to use exhibit number 158, please. Now, just uh, on exhibit number 158, you recognize what's displayed there? Yes. What's displayed there on exhibit number 158? That's my cell phone number. And uh, that's uh, at least your first name there, Brian. Correct. Correct. Now, approximately uh, what time did you text Mr. Hernandez on uh, 
June 16th of 2013. Probably around noon. I'm going to show you. That text there uh, from Brian Trainer at the top of the uh, screen on Exhibit 158 at 12:01 p.m. Do you recognize that text? Yes. And is that the text that you sent Aaron Hernandez on June 16th of 2013? Yes. Read that for us, please. I talked to Alex. He said you have treatment 9 to 12 all week. If you want to head over to see me around 1:30 to 2, Brian. And were you indicating? Um, there all week, what day it was that you were going to first strike that. Had you ever worked with Mr. Hernandez before? No, Mr. Hernandez had actually um, done a video shoot in my facility, you know, probably about a month prior. But, but I had not worked, I had not physically worked with him, no. And uh, it was your understanding that you were going to begin working with him on what particular day, please? That would be on Monday, June 17th. And um, when you indicate there, I talked to Alex, that's uh, the person that had referred him to you, is that correct? Correct. And uh, when, after you sent that text at 12.01 p.m., did <clears throat> Mr. Hernandez respond to you? He did. What did he tell you? Perfect. See you then. And did you text back to Mr. Hernandez immediately? I did. And what's your reply? Can you see that there? Sounds good. Now, following day was June 17th, correct? <coughs> correct. And uh, were you waiting for Mr. Hernandez uh, at your facility in Foxborough uh, between 1.30 and 2 o'clock. Yes, I was. Did Mr. Hernandez arrive there to your facility in Foxborough on June 17th between 1.30 and 2 p.m.? No, he did not. And uh, let me ask you this, sir. In your line of work, is that something that you had uh, experience with uh, professional athletes? Um, I try to make it a point to uh, not let it happen. Well, in your, let's uh, move to the, when you make an appointment with a professional athlete, have you ever had occasions where they just don't appear? Objection? Same. Okay. Sir, when Mr. Hernandez didn't appear, this was the very first time you were supposed to work with him. Correct. correct. Uh, what was, uh, did, did you do something? Yes, I uh, sent him a text message. And do you recall what time it was that you sent him the text message? Uh, probably around 2.45. And that's when it left your phone, is that correct? Correct. And could you tell us, please, what was the tone and tenor of the text message that you sent, sent Mr. Hernandez that uh, afternoon? Objection. To the tone and tenor? Objection sustained. Well, were you intending to, to convey something to Mr. Hernandez in your text? Uh, probably just being a little sarcastic. And uh, I'm going to show you a text, sir, on Mr. Hernandez's phone. You recognize um, that number there on that bottom text on the screen? Yes. Is that your, tech, your uh, cell phone number? Yes. It indicates that it arrives in Mr. Hernandez's phone at 8.35 p.m., is that correct? Correct. And is that the text that you sent Mr. Hernandez on the afternoon, June 17th? Yes. 2013. Could you read that for us, please? I imagine the Pats kept you late today. I will start you up tomorrow, bud. Now, does Mr. Hernandez respond to you that Monday evening? Yes, he does. And you say, I'm sorry, I didn't have the whole thing up there. You say, I'll start you up tomorrow, bud, 145, thanks, Brian, correct? Correct. The next text message there at 8.39 p.m., did you receive that response from Mr. Hernandez? Yes. Can you tell us, please, what Mr. Hernandez tells you at 8.39 p.m. on Monday, June 17th? Lost phone, just got a new one, and didn't know how to get hold of you or neon, LOL. I'm sorry and won't leave you hanging again. I'll be there tomorrow, 145. I'm sorry. See you tomorrow. back to Mr. Hernandez that night? Correct. Can you tell us what you tell Mr. Hernandez? Don't sweat it, bud. See you tomorrow. Uh, 
Have BC quarterback and next NFL QB lined up to throw to you when you're ready also, so bring your cleats gloves starting on Wednesday. And can you describe to the jurors, please, what your uh, what your plans are then? Like, Meet Mr. Hernandez on Tuesday and then on Wednesday to have other folks yeah, there? Tuesday to begin training and then Wednesday to continue training, but also to have uh, a quarterback throw to him. And Mr. Hernandez responds to you that night, is that correct? Correct. And can you tell us uh, Mr. Hernandez's response to your your text. <clears throat> Perfect. Sounds great. And I'm excited and going to get right fast because I'm already behind, so we got to get after it. See you tomorrow, and honestly, didn't mean to leave you hanging and won't again. Thanks. Talk to you tomorrow. You respond that nope. night, uh, June 17th, to Mr. Hernandez. Is that correct? Correct. And can you tell us, please, what it is that your response is? No problem. See you tomorrow. Now, on uh, the following day is Tuesday, June 18th, is that correct? Correct. And you receive a text uh, message from Mr. Hernandez before. Just... <coughs> Before the appointed time of his arrival. Yes. I'm showing you now just at the uh, bottom of the screen. Is that the text message that you received from Mr. Hernandez the morning of June 18th, 2013? Correct. Correct. Can you uh, tell us, please? what Mr. Hernandez tells you on the morning of June 18th. I will not be there today either. Sutton came up, but I'll just call you when I'm back around, which should be soon, but I'll be in touch. Thanks and sorry for all the hassle and inconvenience. Now, <clears throat> do you respond to Mr. Hernandez? Yes. Show you that text message now at the bottom of the screen. Is that your response to Mr. Hernandez? Correct. Could you tell us, please, what it is that you say to Mr. Hernandez now? Okay. In the early afternoon of Tuesday, June 18, 2013. Okay. So should I cancel the QBs for this week and next? Then I just went on to say, sounds good. Talk to you when you return. <clears throat> Mr. Hernandez responds to that text message, correct? Correct. Is that uh, the response that you received from Mr. Hernandez now on the bottom of the screen? Yes, it is. And can you tell us, please, what Mr. Hernandez's response is? I'll give you a call within the next day or two, but not positive. And I truly am sorry for hassle, but something serious came up. respond to Mr. Hernandez at 12-12 uh, that afternoon? Yes. Is that your response there? Yes, it is. Can you tell us, please, what your response is? No problem, bud. Take care of business. And after that time, did you hear from Mr. Hernandez again? I did not. Good afternoon. Are you appearing here pursuant to a subpoena? Yes. Um, and when were you served with that subpoena, sir? Um, probably a few weeks ago. So uh, would this be a normal work day for you? Would you be ordinarily training people at your facility in Foxborough? Yes, I would. But you're missing out on that today? Correct. Uh, how much time have you missed today? Um, the whole day, pretty much. Mm -hmm. 
Now, um, Mr. Hernandez didn't choose you as a trainer, did he? Um, well, I would believe... Mr. Hernandez didn't choose you as a trainer, did he? Um, I believe Alex cho chose... And who was Alex? Alex Guerrero was a uh, physical therapist, body coach, who works with a lot of the players and had been working with Aaron at the time. And uh, Mr. Hernandez, Aaron, um, at that time, sir, he was rehabbing from surgery, wasn't he? Yes. Do you know what that surgery was? I believe it was a shoulder surgery. And um, how, how long have you known Alex? Uh, probably about 10 years. And would you say, is this a, a good thing for your business to have a New England Patriot refer to you? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, sir, I'll repeat my question. Is this a good thing for your business to have a New England Patriot referred to you uh, for help rehabbing from surgery? Uh, While well, I was rehabbing him. For help rehabbing from surgery? Um, yes. And um, so you were, you were pleased to have Mr. Hernandez as a client? Uh, no, he's just a regular client to me. You weren't pleased to have I, it Mr. Just, Hernandez it's, it's, as a It's client. regular business, sir, sir. Sir, the way this works, I ask a question and you just answer it. Okay. You weren't pleased to have Aaron Hernandez as a client? I was stoic, I guess. I just regular business. Stoic? Uh, yes, I was pleased. What do you want me to say? You know? I, I don't want you to say anything but the truth, sir. I just okay. want you to answer my question. Okay. I was happy for the business. And happy that it was a professional football player? Yes. Now, uh, you were taken through a series of text messages um, that uh, you exchanged with Aaron, correct? Correct. And you stated that one of those text messages, you said you were, after Mr. Hernandez had not shown up, that you were sarcastic. Mm. Is that a common trait of yours, sir? You always sarcastic? Yes. Um, talk about that appointment for a minute. That appointment, Mr. Hernandez made that appointment with you uh, for Monday, June 17th, he contacted you and made that appointment on Sunday, June 16th, correct? He called, yes, he contacted me on the 16th, Sunday. So he contacted you on Sunday and set up an appointment for tomorrow, Monday. Correct. But he didn't show up for that. Correct. And you responded with a sarcastic message. Somewhat, yes. Were you angry with Mr. Hernandez for no, not, not showing up? Not really. These things happen, right? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Hernandez then attempted to reschedule a time with you, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. Um, would you say that Mr. Hernandez's texts with you, Mr. McDonough, were polite? Yes. Uh, he apologized several times? Yes, he's a gentleman. Thank you very much, Mr. McDonough. Nothing further. No problem. Now, prior to uh, June 17th of 2013, had you worked with professional football players? Yes. Had you worked with other professional athletes besides football players? Yes. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, notwithstanding the contact that you had with Mr. Hernandez on June 16th of 2013, did he ever become your client? No. Nothing here, Your Honor. You may sit down. Thank you. Your Honor, there was a request between uh, by my brother to um, begin to, with the next witness in the morning. Thank you. We're going to start with the next witness uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, keep your mind suspended. Don't discuss the case um, with yourselves or with anyone else. Continue to avoid anything about the case. Or Mr. Hernandez, that could appear in any newspaper or television or um, other media or social media. Um, or Facebook or Twitter, um, anywhere else, and, and don't speak uh, in any fashion or email or text or otherwise communicate with anyone, including each other, about this case or Mr. Hernandez. And if anyone uh, uh, starts to talk to you about this case or Mr. Hernandez, your jury service, please end it immediately. Do, don't do any research about the case, Mr. Hernandez, or anything you think could be relevant to the case. Uh, tomorrow, as you may I uh, just want to remind you, tomorrow is a half day. We'll be st stopping at 1 tomorrow. Thank you. All right.